All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining in. We'll just give uh, half a minute for others to join in and we'll get started. We have a packed agenda in front of us. Maybe I'll kickstart uh, this with a quick introduction. My name is Rajiv Jairaman. I'm the founder and CEO of Nolscape and the author of uh, Clearing the Digital Blur and the co-author of a book um, called Transformational Leadership in Banking. And I've been in the LND space for the last um, almost 13 years now. And um, I have today with me an eminent uh, panel and really excited to have um, you know, five panelists who um, will weigh in on this critical question uh, that's in front of many organizations today. And that's about building digital fluency in organizations. Uh, so in, I'll go in alphabetical order. Uh, Amit Sharma, uh, welcome to the panel, Amit. Uh, Amit is a Vice President HR and the member of country management team for Volvo Group India. In a career spanning more than two decades, he has worked across various HR roles uh, in leading organizations uh, such as Indian Oil, Johnson & Johnson, Philips, and TE Connectivity. Uh, he has uh, a deep focus on business HR and his experience spans across talent acquisition, management, OD, and culture. And he's a proponent of bringing uh, technology to HR processes while retaining the human connection in the organization. He's been a recipient of various uh, industry uh, recognitions. And the one thing that I um, want to learn from Amit is his ability to exude calm, uh, a, a Zen, an aura of Zen around him all the time. That's something I want to learn from him. Um, <laughs> welcome, Amit. Uh, next, I'll Thanks. move to uh, Sharmishta. Um, 25 plus years of experience in FMCG, IT, consulting, manufacturing, and financial services uh, industry. So such a rich experience across various industries. Um, currently working as senior VP HR and group um, chief learning officer at Access Bank and subsidiaries and been a recipient of the CLO of the year award. Um, so congratulations, uh, Sharmishta for the various achievements in the, the learning space. And um, in the past, she has been uh, with Tata Unisys, Hindustan Unilever, uh, Coca-Cola, and so on. So rich experience across the board. And um, one thing that I want to learn from uh, Sharmishta is her vision. It's always inspiring and big. Uh, so I've, I often come out of the meetings with her with, um, with a sense of awe in terms of the, the vision that he is able to uh, create for herself and for the organization. Uh, next, I'll move on to Salva. Uh, Salva has a uh, working experience with uh, government link organizations and multinational corporations in Malaysia. Uh, while working with Kazana, which is uh, an investment arm of government of Malaysia, she was one of the team members in ensuring successful implementation of uh, the GLC transformation program. And she has also had a stint working closely with Ministry of Education in Malaysia in the development and implementation of Malaysia National Education Blueprint. Um, right, so very, very impressive background and I share something with her. Both of us have done programs at INSEAD and although I've not interacted too deeply with uh, Salva from my uh, network and connections, what I do know is her, um, his eye, her eye for creating an impact, as you can see from the large scale initiatives uh, she has been part of. Next, I'll move on to uh, SV Nathan. Nathan, welcome to this panel. Uh, Nathan is the partner and uh, chief talent officer at Deloitte India. Uh, he is um, a member of the India leadership team and serves on the talent executive leadership of Deloitte Asia Pacific. And he has over 30 plus years of experience in HR management across diverse industries. And um, more recently, he's become the president of NHRD uh, network. Uh, amazing um, uh, stuff. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to a great uh, stint uh, from uh, Nathan on NHRD. And the one thing that I want to learn from him as we were talking just before the call is time management. I don't know how he manages to do all of this. And I'm more uh, particularly interested in knowing what he has for breakfast, what gives him this energy. <laughs> um, then we'll move on to uh, Swati. Swati, welcome to the panel. Uh, Swati is the Global Head Learning Leadership and uh, OD at Dr. Reddy's Labs and a C-suite level uh, practitioner in strategic uh, workforce design, capability and leadership development. She has excellence in uh, talent modeling, strategic visioning and deployment and learning and workplace uh, innovation. Uh, she's a PhD holder and an academic uh, gold medalist with uh, 25 plus publications 
an HR influencer, a leader, and an eminent speaker at various uh, global uh, platforms. Uh, welcome, Swati, to the panel. And one thing Thank that you. I uh, want to learn from her is her rigor, uh, right? Whenever she approaches uh, any learning or leadership development, it's about frameworks, it's about outcomes, it's about the methodology. So I've learned uh, quite a lot from my interactions with her. And today, uh, in the spirit of learning, uh, right? So we will also learn from our uh, participants, right? Participants, please uh, feel free to use the chat window. Um, can you tell us on the chat window, what does digital fluency mean to you? In one line, if you have to define it, what does it mean to you? Please go ahead and leave that note on the chat window. Uh, so I will quickly move on to the questions now. So there are five sections, a lot of ground to cover. Uh, I will start with uh, context setting, and then I'll move on to uh, four different other sections, knowing, doing, becoming, and being digital, of course, right? Knowing digital, doing, becoming, and being digital. So we'll start off with the context setting as the participants are chiming in on the chat window. We will uh, ask all the panelists in a rapid fire format. How do you define digital fluency in your organization and how do you measure it? Uh, so we will go um, in the same order that we see on the screen. Uh, maybe Nathan, you can get uh, started. Sure. Um, being proficient, being agile, strategic use of technology to further growth, be it personal or that of an organization, um, very output oriented, improving skills, high quality service for clients and people. So really it's an amalgamation of how do you bring about a very high digital quotient in your workforce, uh, your organizational operations, infrastructure, and more importantly, building the culture. Awesome, that's quite comprehensive. Thanks, Anathan, for that. Uh, so we'll move on to, um, I lost the, the background screen. Amit, do you want to go next? Sure, sure. So for me, uh, you know, when we look at digital fluency, I would also, uh, I will kind of juxtapose it with knowing a language. Uh, you know, you have three levels of, uh, you know, uh, a language, you know, you understand a language, you have a knowledge of the language, you have to use that language in the right way. To me, it's about the entire concept of digital fluency is about, uh, do we really have the wisdom to apply digital in the way it is the most appropriate. I think that's how I will look at it, uh, you know, not just looking at it from a point of view of, do people know the tools or not? Or do, uh, or, or do people know how to use the tools? It's about how to use it appropriately. It's about how to uh, use them and where to use them, where not to use them and, and what language to speak. And that's how I would look at it, uh, you know, when I would look at this entire concept of digital fluency in the organization, Sir Rajiv. Awesome, great. Thanks, Amit, for that. Um, Swati, you want to go next? Sure. So um, for me, digital fluency is about a way of life and uh, it manifests in the way businesses run and people work every day at work. So in the case of digital fluency, it's strongly embedded in culture and strategy. It's there everywhere. So it becomes a part of the narrative of the organization and people's life. Awesome, well put, thank you. Uh, Sharmishta, you want to go next? Yeah, so for me, digital fluency is really like, you know, uh, the whole thing flowing like water. And for me, it's really uh, right from shaping the future of the organization to really bring in agility, uh, to also shaping the new mindsets for the new world, as well as even, you know, helping us to collaborate and synergize better. It just uh, permeates, I think, uh, all, all, all parts of the organization. Great. Well put. Thank you so much. And Salma, you want to go next? Uh, personally, uh, from my uh, personal point of view, basically digital fluency is the ability of the organizations and individual to embrace the need to change on the digital front and how we would measure it. Uh, simply to say that everyone in the entire organization share the same belief that way forward is digital. I think it's the simplest tools actually to do in terms of measuring it. Yeah. Awesome, great. Uh, so what I'm picking up uh, from this is digital fluency is like water, it needs to flow and it's all pervading, uh, right? Everybody needs to have a common belief. And it's not just about the tools, it's about the wisdom of applying these tools at the right time. And it's also about being output and outcome oriented, creating the right experience for all stakeholders. Yeah. Uh, really well put. So we'll um, listen in on the audience as well. Non-linear thinking is something that's coming up. You know, digital yeah. fluency is not the same old stuff that we used to do in the 
industrial age, but how do we grow exponentially? That's a good one, Yogesh. Uh, curious and forward thinking mindset. Some of us also spoke about a different mindset that is needed. Mm. Um, it's all about preparedness is what Meenakshi is saying. How prepared are you? Are your employees for the new um, change that's ahead of us? Yeah. And the EQ, uh, that's something that's coming up as well. Wonderful uh, points, participants as well. Now, what impact does digital fluency have on your business? If you have to articulate in terms of business metrics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how would you articulate it? Maybe we'll go in the reverse order this time. Uh, Salva? Uh, I think the impact is actually about uh, how far we can see the changes from the traditional or manual processes to more online based and how it has made everyone uh, life is easier both customer and also including our employee. That translates in terms of the impact to the organization. Great, awesome. Charmeshta? Um, sorry, just I was about the to respond. Impact to, on the organization. What, on the organization. what does uh, digital yeah, so for, mean? Uh, yeah, so for, a, for banks like us, I mean, it's a huge impact as far as a customer is concerned. So for example, digital banking for us is, is really the way to go, right? It's direct customer influence, the impact. Um, and we being awarded as the number one digital bank in India, I think we celebrate that success a lot more, giving us a competitive edge. Uh, the other areas of impact is, of course, um, the way you know it is being able to unite the organization, even to have conversations through various uh, platforms and also, um, you know, push decisions a lot faster, lot, lot faster. So okay. we asked, I mean, I mean, lot faster. So I see these, these two impact, one with the customer and also one with the internet ag agility. Uh, awesome. It's very important. Awesome, great. Uh, Swati, over to you. Yeah. So uh, at Dr. Reddy's, you know, for us, it's good health can't wait. And uh, empathy and dynamism, these are our guiding uh, values. And this really comes alive through uh, digital uh, impact because you know, you're know you closer to the customers. Whatever we are trying to innovate is all about uh, making things and medicines affordable for people, which is accessible faster and better. So that faster part comes in. So if I had to look at the impact, it would be a combination of uh, lead and lag indicators both. So when you look at businesses, the core business is also getting digitalized. There are movements into, you know, adjacencies. Some are getting disrupted. So you ha we have uh, Dr. Reddy is doing a whole range of new things in the area of digital as well. So it is pill plus for us beyond the pill. And then you also have our structures, uh, which is our org design, the way we work, becoming more fluid, more networked, more collaborated. So that's on the you know, the kind of uh, the structures that is happening, even the processes are getting automated. So you have more agile ways of working. So that is a process uh, change where we are saving time, the reactions are better, all of that. And then you also have capabilities of people which are also becoming, you know, more digital. So there is a lot of upskilling, multi-skilling, all that coming to the fore. Plus the way we engage with stakeholders has also changed. So, you know, the connect part, which uh, Sarmishta also spoke about, whether it is internally or externally, we are connecting uh, in digital ways, which are also uh, making it more inclusive. And um, you know that is also the speed and the power of digital. So it is all pervasive in all these formats. Awesome. So one connecting thread that I'm picking up is, you know, agility is coming up in pretty much yeah. everyone's definition. And uh, the idea of connectedness, so the idea of uh, stakeholder management and external uh, stakeholders and internal stakeholders, where we need to collaborate a lot more. So those are some things that I'm picking up. Amit, you've got an automated truck behind you. What does digital fluency mean for Volvo? See, uh, I think this is one of the industries which is really getting impacted uh, with this entire concept of what we call as connected, uh, autonomous and electric. Uh, and, and no longer we are talking about products which are standard IC engine uh, products. No, uh, we are actually moving into a zone of uh, you know, connected uh, solutions and autonomous solutions. And, that, and the good example you have, you have given about this autonomous truck, because that's something which is completely move, moving uh, through a control tower mechanism without having any driver seat and all. So the key piece for us is going, the, the future for us is around digital. The future for, for us is around electric. That's where the industry is moving. And that is also, uh, you know, uh, leading to a better safety of our products when I'm seeing people using our products, you know, 
uh, vehicles which are more digital, vehicles which are more uh, connected, which are more autonomous, are the ones which are also safer. The, yeah. the, the error of human, uh, the, the margin of human error uh, really comes down there. Uh, which it automatically kind of uh, you know uh, you know navigates itself, and this entire concept of connected autonomous vehicles are actually leading us to about seventy percent lower energy cost, forty percent lower operations cost, and about ninety eight percent lower emission uh, carbon emission. So it makes a lot of sense in the industry from a larger environment perspective also and a customer perspective also of moving uh, of movement of this industry. Towards from a mechanical devices to devices which are more digital and connected and autonomous. Awesome, that's fascinating. Thank you. And and Nathan, what does digital fluency mean in the context of uh, Deloitte? So for us, it's a it's a it's a lot about what we are doing for our people and for our clients. So for us, it's about how do you not only adopt all anything you do with uh, an experience. So let me start with just this. What kind of an experience will you give to your people? What kind of experience will you give to your clients? How can you make your clients feel even more successful in their marketplace? Because we work for clients. And if there is anything that we can do where for them, they are able to increase footfalls in their own businesses because that's what they are into, then we would have said, yes, we have done something out there. For our people, it's a lot about satisfaction. People saying it's a great place. It's a cool place. I don't have to search for. I don't have to ask. It's uh, moving away from a typical, um, hey, have you done this? What is the process? But but mm. really, uh, failing on something, doing something again, and people feeling cool about it. So yes. digital fluency also from, from our businesses saying, okay, um, it's, it's okay to do something wrong. So uh, moving really digital fluency for us if I have to sum all of this is moving away from all these issues of, of, of control, this whole thing around uh, pondering over strategy and moving that to the piece of innovation and of course the experience. Awesome. So we live in an experience economy and you hit the nail there, right? And digital enables that. So we'll move on to the next section, which is about knowing, right? Within the organization, how do you drive this level of awareness? And because digital is a transformational process, um, this question uh, is for Sharmishta to begin with. Uh, what are you doing in your organization to build this level of awareness with senior leadership, right? Because it's a transformation. Uh, mm -hmm. Is digital getting enough priority given how close it is to your business model of digital banking? Can you yeah. uh, some light on that? Yeah, extremely important, you know, and I, in the last six months, I think it has, it has gathered significant momentum and I have to like, you know, go a little bit back. So how leadership vision uh, also helps organization to create momentum. So this was, uh, you know, last year, I think 2020 is when Corona hit us, right? So this was around 2019, November, December, when it had started sort of picking up in China. So our CEO was in a conversation, uh, MD was in a conversation with our um, technology team. And he asked this question that in the event, you know, it is to hit us, how ready are we? And no one had an answer, you know, really, you know, some of the brightest minds in technology that we had and no one had an answer. And we are like 80,000 people, so many customers, suppliers, uh, partners, so on and so forth. So he put the team on track saying, let's be prepared, you know, and when the, when the world was, had not yet awakened. So when we were all surprised, like as internal employees, that when it did hit us, how ready we were. And we were just wondering, how did that happen? Because we were yeah. not known to be as a child till then. I mean, now, yes. of course, the last two years, things have changed uh, or are changing very fast. So I think it really starts with the leadership vision and the entire momentum this builds around that and it continues. So right now we are literally running, uh, you know, uh, at this point in time, three initiatives. Initiative number one is where the Mancom and uh, is, is, is coming together and really learning what is digital technology, what are digital tools to that details over the period of almost three to four months. And no one was reluctant. No one said, where will time come from while there's so much happening? 
the second that we are going ahead with, we are actually partnering with Singularity University uh, very soon and next year, and we'll be driving some agenda there, uh, and which is for thousand plus leaders in the organization, which is our VPs and above, to really, and again, craft now that people are getting ready. So now craft our digital strategy where well, lots are happening, but how do we get ready now for the next three years? We were ready till here. How do we now get ready for the next three? So really craft that in partnership with one of the world's best. Our board is taking active interest and investing time with us to really understand and co-create this process. And then it sort of gets con converted to some digital initiatives, et cetera. As you know, with organization like yours, uh, we are really leveraging to help people. Um, now you know, we are creating leadership playbook to really help everyone understand and understand new ways of life digitally, right? And we really feel that this chunking and this is going to give us a lot of head start. And then finally, uh, maybe Nathan, you would be happy to know that we are also planning to partner with Deloitte uh, to, to really drive the capability down the organization. So for us, it's, it's, it's quite a comprehensive uh, agenda and uh, we know we ought to do it. We're excited about it and moving forward with that. Awesome, great. Thank you so much for that. And Nathan, over to you, um, senior leadership and what's being done at that level. Um, the, one of the first things that we did very early on, of course, uh, Sharmishra has, has, has really taken the wind out of the sails because she's uh, really pointed to some of the key questions. The pandemic brought in overnight digitalization and really highlighted the need for a digital workplace. Now, the how of it and what really transpired, you didn't really need a, a big culture transformation coming in because you had no choice. You were really at the edge and um, there were a lot of things to be done. But um, how do you then put all this in place? Because between a wish and a desire, you got to do all of this right. Pretty much like what Access has done, we have a governing board. The governing board is very interested in what is happening with digital fluency. Of course, in all honesty, I must mention that we don't call it that. We don't call it digital fluency. But we look at all of what we're doing in digital from the lens of what we are doing for our people, what we're doing for our clients. Because we serve only two markets, our people market and our client market. Uh, we started to look at how do we really delegate how do we move away from delegation to empowering? Because delegation always has this notion, you got to come back to me. Uh, we don't need that. We need our people to be empowered. And why do we need this? 85% of Deloitte today, um, millennials. So we said, we need to have a millennial partner at the leadership level. And her only job, uh, her only job is to make sure that all the aspirations of millennials looking at anything to do with strategy execution and whatever that we do in the area of operations is through the lens of how a millennial would see it and experience it. So bringing all of that, ensuring that innovation happens. We have a chief innovation officer. It's, it's a very, uh, very, very high sounding title, but his only job is to make sure that you leave it in the safe hands of people who are the young. So it's the young leading the organization. So a whole host of things have been done by this. The moment you did that, and by the way, all this has been done in the last 18 months, and you see the organization suffer uh, on one side, people giving up, suffering, the whole thing about controls, and the other one feeling, hey, this is exactly what we wanted. And is we believe that mm. we need to have goals for our people. Very important, particularly our leaders, because if, if they don't get it the way a millennial would, would get it, or our clients would need it, or people, the whole thing, if it is about experience, how do you get them to do that? And um, again, make sure that the governance is right, because the, the digital transformation has got to be done right. And uh, as was once said, <laughs> When the digital transformation is done right, it's like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. If it is done wrong, you will have a really fast caterpillar. By the way, I didn't say it. It was George Westerman who said it. I found this quote really inspiring. So with that, let me turn this back to you. 
All right, thanks. Um, that was phenomenal, Nathan. So uh, thanks for setting that up. Uh, we'll move on to the next one, which is about, um, okay, on the one hand, senior leaders get it. They have a vision. Um, they articulate that vision. That's one problem in itself, uh, right? How do we get uh, some of the senior leaders who've been there, done that, to adopt something completely new? Um, but the other problem, of course, is to cascade that vision and strategy to the rest of the organization, right? Where you're dealing with thousands and thousands of people and everybody needs to be part of it. It needs to be like water. It needs to flow. Um, so my next question is, how do you uh, ensure that this digital strategy is cascaded to various levels within the organization? Salva, you want to go next on this one? Uh, I think uh, I could share with the SME experience. We started our digital transformation early 2019. The bank used to be a very traditional bank. So digital is the way forward, the only way to go. So uh, for our assumptions for senior leadership is granted, you are expected to understand the principles. But then we understand, we realize as well, the fact that our media management is actually our so-called turnkey when we talk about building the entire changes. So we started with our leadership conference on an annual basis. It must be driven by a digital platform. We kind of overdose our media management with digital uh, so that they, re they realize that that's the only way moving forward. Uh, second thing that we, what we did was actually we identify, we call it as our influencer, our ambassador. Approximately 15% of the entire organization consists of our high potentials and our talent. They are also being equipped with the necessary skills and understandings of the entire aspirations of digital journey for the bank. Uh, those are the people that we give them a little bit extra tender loving care to build their understandings and also their love in terms of digital transformation. They've been given apps then we are able to curate their learning experience online and they will be able to see how it benefits them. Uh, nevertheless, at the end, towards the entire process, then we focus on our employee. And when we talk about our employee, uh, a little bit more thought process needs to be put in place because uh, to get the buy-in of the mass majority is going to be very difficult and we cannot go on the routes of learning only. We also have to embed the elements of employee engagement in the process. So what we did was actually the, even the engagement being done digitally and it must be fun. Uh, our principle when we conduct so-called digital employee engagement, we only ask these two questions. I, I'm happy to share with everyone. Uh, for any initiative, uh, we always ask this question. Does it reduce the pain of our employee or does it increase the pleasure? So we will only embark if it gives either or, because both actually beneficial for the organization. If it doesn't address either or of these two components, then we stop the initiative. Uh, that's how we make sure that we are able to accelerate the buy-ins of our uh, across organization. Amazing. That's great learning. Uh, Swati, over to you. How do you yeah. create a digital strategy across levels within the organization? Yeah. So, you know, um, it's a lot about... Uh, trying to harmonize uh, the entire digital uh, momentum in all the talent processes. So whether it is the performance management or it is, uh, you know, enabling their skill development or it is hiring people with digital quotients. So everywhere at all talent, possible talent processes have the digital part there. And that's what we do. Also, uh, we, what we've done is we try to, uh, you know, attack this in a three-pronged way. Like first one is try to build a layer of uh, hyper-awareness where everybody in the organization, you know, I'm talking about the last mile, being hyper-aware about our 3D agenda. So for us at Dr. Reddy, the 3D agenda is around digital data and design thinking. You know, so they need to have certain amount of fluency around these areas. The second is creating this a layer of digital translators. Now, the digital and data translators are the ones who act like a, a conduit between the business as well as the, the digital team. So that was also really helpful because they're having skills which are deeper and uh, they are able to speak the language and make a case for it and act like champions. And uh, last but not the least, also getting the leaders to be very actively involved as uh, the ones who are the change agents. So a lot of focus around how they will evangelize the culture and, you know, uh, get the platforms in place and the entire experience of making digital very seamlessly woven with all the work and the business processes. So this kind of an approach has worked well for us where all parts of the organization are finding digital to be not like another work to do, but it's simply a way to be. So if the focus is on that, I think that really uh, has helped us. 
Awesome, great. That's very comprehensive. Thanks. Uh, Amit, how do you ensure this whole idea of connected autonomous and electric that cascades and people get ready for that future? So I think a couple of uh, you know, layers in this. The first is this is something which is being propagated across uh, the, uh, by the leadership across all levels, across all uh, meetings, town halls, uh, you know, uh, at, at a global summits. So we are talking the same language. I think that's very critical. You know, whenever you are, you know, bringing in a, a new dimension in an organization which was earlier not really part of it, how do you really bring it into your everyday language and how do you really bring it in in, in everyday lingo? And this is when the leadership starts talking about it and using that same language time and again repeatedly in in every forum. So that's the first thing uh, which we are doing. Second piece is we have all, we have kind of changed our uh, uh, you know our, our, uh, we had a function called uh, group IT and now we have moved that changed the name of the function to to, uh, to be called uh, digital uh, and now even the chief information officer is now called a chief digital officer now it may look like a semantic but also a message to the entire organization that we are moving on from just IT which is just talking about creating some software or creating some local tools and all. To a different way of working, you know. Also, and, and that messaging uh, is very is very very powerful. That this change in the name is not just uh, a different title; it represents a different thinking and a different philosophy altogether. And this uh, and this uh, digital function, which was uh, or IT function, which was earlier, you know, uh, a separate uh, vertical, uh, you know, uh, right from the beginning to the top hierarchy, is now getting embedded in the businesses. So we have four broad businesses: trucks, buses, construction equipment, and engines. And fifth one we have is our, our in-house financial services. So, so that's what our larger ecosystem of the customer facing uh, stuff is. Now each of these, uh, the digital is now getting embedded there. It's no longer a separate vertical uh, because again, the, the message is, this is going to be the way forward for all of us uh, to be there. Each business strategy uh, is having an element of digital. How, how are we really looking at the digital uh, piece and how are we leveraging the digital piece uh, you know, uh, uh, for the future? And all the management teams across all countries, including India, are actually being challenged to think around it. That you know, you, you have to really, really th uh, think differently. Uh, have a have a senior person who understands this at the same time cascades that uh, uh, that all over. So those are the critical pieces of it. And also from our uh, you know, in, in globally we call it something our seven top strategic objectives. So one of the key, one of those seven are uh, around uh, digital. So, so that's where we are doing. It's a very comprehensive way in, in, in which we are uh, really adopting uh, right at, right from the level of talking about it to embedding it in the business to, to really make it happen on the ground. Amazing. Thank you so much, Amit, for that. Um, so please feel free to um, ask your questions. Uh, this is for the audience. I, I see yeah. some questions flowing in. We'll reserve this for a little later uh, after we uh, complete our questions here. Uh, please uh, keep them coming. Um, so the next question I have is on the doing section. So, so far what we have done is we've understood what um, digital fluency is and uh, from the knowing part, how do you develop this awareness within the organization and create a sense of alignment. Now, when it comes to doing, it's actually touching the way of working, right? The mm -hmm. methodologies that we use in our uh, daily practice, right? Uh, this question is for both um, Amit and Swati. Uh, you've touched upon a part of this earlier, but I'd like you to go a little bit in depth. Um, what sort of methodologies are you embracing to move more towards a digital fluency? And there are many things around data, agility, design thinking, and so on, some of which we spoke about earlier. Uh, can you mm -hmm. some light on how are you actually going about building those methodologies and embedding that within the organization? So when you're talking about uh, embedding it in the organization, I can tell you that uh, we have our cultural credo, you know, leadership behaviors that we call that uh, everyone and Dr. Reddy practices. So that is aspire. So the I part of it stands for innovation and which is a lot about having this digital mindset. So, you know, when you make it uh, like, you know, embedded in your everyday work, people see it in, dialed up in a very pronounced manner. And that's where the conviction comes in. So how do you communicate to them that this is really pertinent? So that has to be done like all the time and by everyone. I'm emphasizing that a lot. Also, uh, you know, what we have done is we have been celebrating these moments where people have really come out and practice digital in the, in the desired way. So, you know, we have something called digital ninjas. I spoke about this hyper awareness, no? So yes. when they uh, gather some credits by virtue of courses and learn new skills, we celebrate them as digital ninjas. 
and trust me it's really augured very well for us because you know everybody likes to be flashed like a digital ninja and today we not only have many ninjas in the organization all through you know various uh, geographies and uh, parts of the organization but we have also ninjas going and doing more accelerated kind of uh, courses projects etc then you also have uh, these ideation uh, sort of shark tanks you know when you have ideas which are coming from people real people where they are saying hey can we do this and as i told you about the pill plus so it is not only you know in our traditional business in the way it exists but also the way we can disrupt get into new businesses or adjacencies so we are encouraging that mindset where we are celebrating innovation and digital so that really helps also sharing of uh, success stories and you know sometimes even learning from failures like you know sometimes everything doesn't work so nathan also spoke about it you know you want to uh, want people to prototype you want them to experiment be creative and there's a safety net provided for so all that also helps so you know i would say the whole piece around knowledge management is also very uh, critical when you are trying to build this uh, digital foundation so uh, these are the ways in which uh, you can make digital a part of your credo and culture so that uh, people uh, you know just flow with it and just go for it so we've done all these things it's worked well for us and there are many more miles to go so i can just say these are uh, quick steps in that direction great thank you swati and over to you amit yeah so some of these things uh, I, i think they are uh, you know common across uh, you know i'll not get into too much of nuts and bolts of saying you know we, we are about agile way of thinking which we are doing or agile way of doing thinking or data analytics or uh, adopting tools the more important piece what we are focusing here in terms of doing uh, this is looking at it from a not from a process perspective but from a outcome perspective and when we saying outcome perspective in the outcome perspective from a point of view of making a customer impact outcome from a uh, you know perspective of how do we make our customers succeed how do we really get them uh to save their cost how do we really get them to have uh, better efficiencies how do we really get them to ensure a lower uh, carbon footprint so entire focus uh, for uh, for us is around it so when you have that as a larger purpose then it doesn't really matter what are the methodologies used because that's something uh, uh, you know uh, the, uh, it comes naturally to people in terms of uh, various tools which are there but outcome is very very critical over here so and, and what we are doing uh, in india and we recently launched about a week back is what we call as a camp x now camp x is one of our global innovation centers uh, and uh, it was uh, initially set up in in our headquarters in sweden and india is the second site uh, globally to have it which is around leveraging the digital and the innovation platforms coming together now this is coming up as part of a technology center in india you know uh, last week we had a ambassador of sweden uh, coming in inaugurating that now this is uh, the, this is the place where we uh, where we want people to all come together sit together collaborate and think what are the uh, how can we really Im- uh, make a better impact on the customer a better impact on the environment through digital as well as innovative uh, innovative means through digital that's the key uh, you know uh, 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 the credo behind uh, setting up of that so that's something which we have recently done and maybe uh, sometime in future i'll be able to share more details of how it's really coming up uh, on that rajiv awesome thanks amit uh, so we are done with the doing section as well which is you know what are some best practices methodologies and amit says uh, outcome before methodologies um, right so wonderful so now we'll go into becoming right which is not just about the capabilities and methodologies but the the mindsets that we need to um, embrace and this is not just few leaders but across the organization um and what has worked what has not worked so far in this whole journey it's fraught with a lot of uncertainties uh, right so many companies are losing their path in the um, digital age so any um, guidelines in terms of things that have worked or haven't worked so firstly i'll focus on the mindsets uh, salwa do you want to come in on this one uh, what are some mindsets you're looking to build in your organization Uh, for SME Bank, and uh, our whole concern has always been about beyond financing. And beyond financing, one of the core components is actually relating to digital. And when we spoke about digitalization, it's all about customer experience. Uh, and from the perspective of the management, customer has both components, the internet and external. So how, how then, in terms of the entire mindset, 
idea being driven by our business front because they are the ones actually facing the customer but then the internal customer the human capital play a, a major role uh, I, I just want to share when we started the entire digital culture transformation and when we talk about internal people it start from HR we are the one who needs to demonstrate that we are also digital savvy we cannot be asking people to go digital but yet we are the ones actually issuing papers for letters appointment uh, hence we are we we always pioneer in terms of building the digital culture transformation for the bank that's actually the importance of having role modeling and the ones actually speaking it must be the ones actually actioning on it uh, i think that's actually very much important mindset that we need everyone actually to also uh, believe on it and for human capital all initiative needs to align as well with aspiration even our rewards actually digital driven we rewards on innovation we do not rewards non innovation so yeah. when the communication is consistent then people can see eh yeah that's right the entire organization actually shifting to that direction i think yeah. that mindset need to be coupled with action if just a, a mere communication hr propagating via email communication via just a yeah. video it doesn't work people want to see in action then we can make sure that the mindset happen so, awesome that's that's a great point uh, I think we lost Sharma Star if I'm not mistaken. I can't see her. Yeah. Um, Nathan, do you want to uh, comment on the mindset element? Yeah, uh, just uh, picking up from where, um, where where we had uh, Salma speak about it so passionately. Uh, it, it's very true. We are looking at the mindset. Uh, look at it this way: the guy who invented the wheel was an idiot, but the guy who invented the other three wheels is a genius said um, Sid Caesar said this some years ago. Our problem is really not about the mindset. It's about the set mind. And how do we change that? And particularly when organizations are a lot older. For example, my organization is 175 years old. In India, it's 125 years old. But then if you have a whole bunch of people who are thinking one side and moving one side, and if you have a a set of people who are part of the leadership who are thinking differently, how do you then align everybody? The pandemic has been a, a fantastic teacher. Speed, the art of the possible. For example, how do you do an audit? You have to see the documents. Digital gets you there. You don't have to see any of the papers anymore. Today, we have bots that train drones that can do the physical verification via their cameras. Can you believe that? So you don't have to go into any of these large factories and do a physical verification anymore. It's about how do we really make things easy? Um, look at it, a whole thing. I've been speaking about customer experience and client experience all the time. And I'll say this again, um, buying an Apple, somebody has to force you, right? Have you ever bought an, um, an Apple product? You, you will see that there is not a shred of paper. You will have to go, you will have to use your finger. There is a touch screen and, and that entire thing is an experience. And then you buy it because in some way it's, it's, it's gently nudging you there. So not just one, very great way of doing it. Second, we've got to find ways that we forcibly use things like empowering. And this whole uh, idea of delegation, I spoke about this earlier, you got to move out of that. How do we focus on saying, is there a better way digitally? Anytime you ask this question, is there a better way digitally? And then you will find a lot of the art of the possible coming up. Risk taking has spoken about this. Innovation is something. The innovation mindset does not come automatically, Raji. Mm. It, it gently will have to be pushed. People will have to be um, recognize some people even rewarded for some of their ideas. You'll have to showcase all of this. You can have several ha hackathons. Um, at, at one end, at the other end, you got to find our leaders who can just um, change their set mind of letting go. It's okay. There's nothing. I mean, we work with such tight swim lanes, it's impossible. So we got to find a way of letting go. Uh, have open, honest communications. What working, what's not working. You don't have to go and teach people this whole art of collaboration. And I think that there are several um, people in the knowledge field 
who would today rue the fact that you actually had to do programs on collaboration. You don't have to do it. It, it happens naturally yeah. because you don't have a choice today. And last but not the least, acknowledging that we are not the know-alls. We don't know enough. We need help. And if you are transparent, honest, and, and say this openly, you will find that there is this whole thing about the set mind and this mindset slowly moving, changing. And um, so those are my few lines. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Nathan, for that. Um, so in the interest of time, I'm going to quickly move to the being part, uh, which is the last one, right? Where you are born digital from uh, a digital immigrant to a digital native, right? How do we get to that stage? Um, so I just want to collapse some questions into one. What is um, What are some cultural changes that we need to bring in? Uh, to for all of this to work. So we spoke about the strategy, the capabilities that we need to build. Now the cultural element, right? Um, Sharmishta, do you want to weigh in on this one? What are some cultural aspects that have to be taken care of? Mainly from an unlearning standpoint, we are, we are, we are all products of the industrial age. We are getting into the digital age. Uh, what do we need to unlearn? Yeah, so I, I, we really, you know, it's very funny that I would be saying this, but I think the first thing that we need to unlearn is... Uh, uh, not to be fixated with our own mindsets, right? Uh, so I think that's the first unlearning which is really coming up. And of course, we know the opposite of that is growth mindset, but that's the journey, you know? And I don't think even if we unlearn fixed, we just don't become growth mindset the next day, right? Yes, it takes a little true. while to get there. So, so I think that's the first, you know, cultural nuance that sort of needs to uh, come in. Um, some fixated to to something which is which is more growth led, um, and that's why organizations, you know, over the years have not really grown fast. So so that's why you know some who have we have seen uh, the comms, you know, they've just grown phenomenally. And when you read about a Jeff Bezos, you realize whatever. So uh, that's one. Uh, the second I think is coupled with that is you know this whole mindset shift of the importance of being humane at the core. And all the panelists, uh, especially Nathan uh, Swati talked about it, being humane at the core. Now, we always talked about many things like managers, people live, managers, managers, live, people, whatever, all that. But I think humane at the core is, you know, I remember one of our leaders once saying that uh, when I talk to my son at home, I'm very comfortable to get with him into a debate. But when I come into the organization, I somewhat want to drive my own agenda. So leaders have been aware, but somehow we've been so task focused that this whole humanness on one hand, physical, physical health issue, on the other hand, the real human being, and on the other hand, with growth mindset, the task to be delivered. How do you build? I don't think without being human at the core, we can get discretionary effort or exponential effort, which is required. That's the mindset shift. Leaders are grappling with it. I again see that they wish to be that, but they're grappling with it. And the okay. other whole element of, you know, driving this process excellence using digital. So for example, we take process, we put it from the standard to an automated mode. It doesn't work. We take learning in a classroom to a VILT mode. It doesn't work. This whole world is of process is also completely changed. So how do we really leverage this? I was telling my team, you know, otherwise it's going to be garbage in, garbage out. Let's be very mindful. So I think these are the three, you know, fundamental shifts that we really need to make to make those other things of synergy, agile, very important in decision making, innovation to all of that to work. The good news, however, is, you know, recently I was having conversation with 60 leaders. The good news is they're all aware and they're all asking for help. But these are three big cultural shifts, you know, of three different dimensions. Uh, that we need to bring in. And uh, yeah, that's what is important. Got it. Thank you so much, Sharmishta, for that. Uh, Salma, how do you make all of these changes stick? Right, It's one thing to introduce a change, but how do you see this through and make sure that it actually sticks? Uh, for Based on my experience, uh, in principle, uh, in any new initiative that we would like to embark in the organization, sometimes you just have to adopt the old hats the carrot and stick still function. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry. I'm not so sure in, in, in your area, but in our, our country, carrot and stick still, still works. 
sometimes you just have to design the right carrots and also the right sticks to be used in various uh, elements of the organization. Uh, but then another lab, another thing that we, uh, what we did is actually to make sure that the change happened. Our principle is very simple. No one left behind. Because we admit the fact that in the entire organization, not everyone is actually early adopter. They are also like mm -hmm. it. It doesn't mean we need to leave them behind. They no. may require a little bit more extra attention with regards to the initiative. And also understanding what would be their motivation. Some of them, because they worry the digital transformation may affect their rice bowl. And as a human capital practitioner, if we are not able to understand that, we may have we may face some resistance with regards to digital transformation, not because they do not like it, it's just because they are worried that they are rice bowl affected. Hence, the principles of no one left behind is actually very important uh, for the organization when we embark on the entire journey. Yeah, that's a very inclusive vision mm -hmm. as well. left behind. We need to take them all to the digital age. Yeah. Wonderful. So uh, in the interest of time, we'll um, also uh, listen to some of the questions that are coming in on the chat window. Um, Ipshita has a specific question, uh, I guess, for Swati and um, Amit. How has mm. the journey of digital transformation been for organizations like Dr. Reddy's and Volvo? Has adoption of digital technologies within the workforce seen ample adoption? I, I know it's a large question, but um, can you talk yeah. about the maybe the things that have worked and have not worked? Yeah. Right? What are some lessons that we can learn from your transformation process? Swati, over to you. Yeah, sure. So um, if I I can take Dr. Reddy's as an example. So we have the manufacturing part, we have the R&D, we also have the commercial and sales part. So in the manufacturing, what we've done is we've adopted an agenda called Ops Next, where we are trying to look at industry 4.0 in action. And trust me, like, you know, taking it to the operators, you know, down the line and getting everybody to change, not only automate the way they were working, but the whole mindset part of it, it's not been easy. Uh, but I can say that there is momentum for it. So we will uh, we are approaching it uh, by virtue of giving them the skills and capabilities, the resources, and an entire ecosystem where this can be sustained. Even in the R and D part, it's all about uh, from a, from right from the selection to launch. You know, launch of new products. You must have seen in the COVID also we came out with a whole range of new things that we did. So that, that entire range has been digitalized in a great way. So, you know, we again have our scientists and the people who are researching also taking to digital. Now, if, if you look at the R&D, um, no, sorry, the commercial and sales uh, folks there, there they have been connecting with doctors in the, with the, in, during the course of the pandemic through digital mediums. So the Doc Connect kind of platforms, which were digital platforms were launched by us. So what we've done is I'm just trying to give you case and points and examples to say that you will have to have the right platforms in place. You will have to have people being upskilled to be able to use them, not uh, look at digital as a thrust upon agenda. A pull has to be created. So for a pull to be created, it has to be part of the ecosystem. And uh, whether the journey and the adoption has been easy, no, it's not all that easy. You will not have everybody running and going for it. You will have some early adopters and you'll also have some fence sitters. You'll have some critics, all that naysayers, they will all be there. So change management, when you focus on how this will pan out like an experience for employees, just as you're thinking about the customers, will make it easy. So please, uh, focusing on change uh, helps and it has helped us immensely. I think that's something that I would submit. Great. Thank you, Swati. And over to you, Amit. Any lessons on digital change management? See, for us, uh, we started our journey in uh, digital somewhere in uh, early part of last decade itself. And that's, uh, and that's the reason why, you know, by the you know, mid of uh, last decade, uh, we could really launch a lot of uh, autonomous products, uh, you know, right from autonomous buses to autonomous trucks to even having a self-driving uh, uh, refuse truck, uh, you know, for, for, for urban areas, a truck which is autonomously moving in the mines, uh, moving, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing the entire, um, uh, moving the material over there. So, so, so that's how we started. Now, if you really ask me what was the change management provided behind it, I think, again, my, I'll come back to, uh, go back to what I initially said. You, do, you have to look at it from an outcome perspective. Don't look at it from a process perspective. Because if it's process perspective, in my view, it's not going to succeed. People are very sharp. They will always find ways and means to bypass a process uh, to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to something which makes them more comfortable. Uh, and something which is, the, you know, the, the concept of line of following the line of least resistance follows, uh, goes everywhere. 
but once you have an outcome in mind that's when you know uh, you know everybody knows that we have to achieve it so for us that that change management was from that perspective that we need to launch a product like this now what do we really need to do and that's what uh, and, and then you can't have a digital product if if at the back end you are not working digitally you know? so so the entire journey for us was like that it was not like you know we we create systems and then we go to the output we were we first looked at the output what we need and then started working backwards to it and i think that to me is uh, has been the success for us in volvo great um any other questions from the audience uh sharmisha would you like to answer the same question on uh, the change management uh, taking the organization from point a to point b uh, what are some change management principles that you can share with the audience i uh, see i think it is really about uh, you know bringing change uh, sort of department wise so really we are picking up let's say four or five functions at one go uh, and then drive the change so as i said first was the you know the whole digital mobile banking so which was the customer experience the next we moved actually to the people so we really created you know uh, we believe as an organization that mobile app mobile is really um, your our life and world now so everything that was happening on desktop for employees experience has now moved to this one mobile app so with everything in that app so that is a beautiful experience even if when i use it so it just works beautifully next really is about you know now picking up so like that every organization every department has done its bit in terms of getting their own story right i think now it's really about collectively moving towards the third step uh, is first step is a, a customer second step is various departments doing getting their piece right now the third step is really about uh, now the experience bit whether it's for our people or whether it's for our customers that's the little harder part because you have to think innovation you have to get decision making you have to work with people's mind so the whole cultural change agenda for really digital adoption so i think actions have been taken now the adoption for the higher order stuff like innovation experience and stuff like that got it, got it i could just uh, i just wanted to make one more point rajiv uh, we yes. created a change management playbook i mean that yeah. has uh, that has been a very interesting experience because what we realized is uh, when people are at different stages in the continuum and when they are grappling with challenges they sometimes don't have answers but when you have you know things evolving and templates being created what worked what did not work so this change management playbook which is more like a dynamic iterative playbook which is for people to refer to when in doubt share things has really helped so awesome that that's a great idea that, yeah yeah that's something similar to what sharmista was pointing out earlier right so the the playbook for leaders uh, we have about a minute more so i just want to wrap this up in the spirit of learning i want to know that one thing that you all personally use um uh, to keep yourself abreast of whatever is happening in the digital world how do you uh, sharpen your learning quotient uh, salva we'll start with you Uh, I have good partner with Nolscap. They are the ones actually feeding me with the necessary information. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, I think it's Thank important you. to have the right partner who could uh, be with you throughout the journey. Yeah. Great. And and personally speaking, how do you keep up? Uh, do you have? Uh, do you speak to people, experts? Uh, do you follow social media? How do you personally keep up? Uh, I definitely the social media and paying much more uh, attention with regards to what's new in the entire, in, even in the entire world, and particularly for the industry itself. Yeah. Awesome, Swati, over to you. I think I always try and listen more, and uh, from listening comes reflecting and uh, new insights that I learn a lot from experience of others and some from my own. Great, Amit. Yeah, one of the things has been declaring a digital blur. Your book, Rajiv. That... <laughs> okay, let me clarify this. I didn't wait to say any of this. <laughs> <laughs> But Thank seriously, so I, I, I'm saying that on a serious note. See, uh, for me, uh, the reading uh, is is a critical piece of input gathering, and, and and kind of reading the content like that because that really opens up your mind. Uh, you know, in terms of what's possibility. You know, sometimes we are we don't know what's the possibility till the time somebody. Yeah. You no know, open it up in front of us so that's where yeah. reading really helps because that's where you get a perspective across the world around it 
so yeah, so that's would be my that's my way of uh, keeping myself abreast on that. Uh, right. Great, thank you, Amit. And Nathan, over to you. How do you uh, keep up? So I I I have something called a reverse mentoring. So I have a, a very young professional, all of about 20, I think 25, 26 years old. And, um, and, and she really spends some quality time. I spend some quality time with her. And when she comes in, you're the humble student. And you learn so much in just the 30 minute interaction that you have with her. So that's what I do. Awesome, I keep that's listening. great. And of course reading is one, but if you listen, then there are a lot of perspectives. Absolutely. Sharmishta, how do you keep up? <laughs> so first is I have challenged myself. You know, one morning I just got up and I wrote to uh, our MD and another leader saying, I'm going to be creating a white paper on digital uh, for the financial <laughs> services. Now, once they said, okay. So then I had to sort of push myself. So I take help from multiple sources. So I look forward to help our people who sends me articles. So that's on the whole, I would say the culture mindset that side. I also have people like some organizers like ThoughtWorks, et cetera. So who are really digital experts, the books that they write, the people who work with, they work with us. So really understand the tools and technology part from them. And, um, and of course I've read up uh, some of the books as well, but now I'm also looking forward to get mentored by my daughter, who is now joining <laughs> recently the digital consultancy practice for KPMG in UK. So I'm just awesome. hoping that she'll be a good mentor for me, like Nathan has one. So that's going to be my fourth addition to my current <laughs> strategies. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much. It's uh, a couple of minutes above uh, the scheduled time. Thank you so much for taking this time and uh, for sharing all your insights. I'm sure. It was super enriching for all the participants we have here. And participants, thank you for your questions as well. And uh, once again, uh, we live in the digital age. Machines are learning. The real question is, are we? Right? I, I always end my sessions with this provocative question. So it is down to our learning. Uh, how quickly and smartly can we le learn to keep up with all the changes? And so hopefully in the future, we'll have a lot more organizations building digital fluency yeah. and get ready for the future. So thank you all. Thank you, panelists, for, uh, for all your insights. And thank you, participants, for being here. Really appreciate your time. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Rajiv. Thank you.